Hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope you're having a wonderful day. On this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can turn a canvas, a stretch canvas, it can be any size. I'm, I have some over here, I'll show you in a minute. A little bit of acrylic paint, your hot glue gun, and some metallic leaf. And you can make something amazingly beautiful like this or this or this or really whatever you would like so it's going to be super fun and um i think you're gonna really have a whole new love for your hot glue gun after you see this video uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, say hi, let me know where you're watching from, and feel free to sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. If you're watching this on YouTube, hello, feel free to ask questions in the comments, and um, let's just jump right in. Okay, so this is what we're going towards. I'm going to set that right here. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to decide what kind of a canvas you want to use. And there's tons of options. You could do something big like this or something like this. It's a rectangle or a square or these flat ones that come from Dollar Tree, two in a pack for $1. Or it could be an itty bitty little one or it could be one of these ones like uh, this one right here that have a really deep profile which makes them so they can stand up this is my preference uh, but it's not always possible now where do you get a canvas that is a great question you can find them just about everywhere from Dollar Tree Walmart sometimes has some great ones. Hobby Lobby sometimes has this great deal where you get multiple canvases for $12.99 or something. You can find them at Joann's, Michael's. I find canvases sometimes at Dollar Tree and there's no reason why if you don't, uh, not Dollar Tree, sorry, Goodwill. If you don't like what is on it, why you can't come home and paint it white and start all over. So there's tons of different sizes of canvas. For this project, we're going to be doing, let's see, where's the one I have out for us to work on? It's white, so it's blending in. Oh, here it is. Okay, so we're going to be using one of these Dollar Tree ones. It's like the a five by seven, okay? And um, this, you get what, two of these for one dollar, so this is a 50 cent investment. And the first thing you're going to do is decide what colors you want to do. So, I have decided for these projects that we're gonna do a combination of blue and green, and I am just using this very simple acrylic paint that is Waverly brand from Walmart in the craft section. So I'm using this green, which is called Scallion, this pretty blue, which is called Lagoon, and then I'm using the white. And, um, yeah, these are no prep acrylic paint, whatever that means. Okay, so before I came live, I put some on a handy dandy paper plate. And um, I'm gonna just use a cruddy brush. Uh, you can use whatever you have, but I wouldn't use a little artist brush. I would use something bigger, okay? And I'm going to just dip my brush in a little bit of the blue, and a little bit of the green. But you guys, you could do this in whatever colors appeal to you. And according to the season, so if you wanted to do something for fall, you totally do that. Um, okay, so then I'm gonna pounce off a little bit of my paint on my paper plate. All right, and then I'm just going to start doing these streaky This was the first pass. And don't worry if you get some big blobs. They, they really, they kind of add a little interest to your project. You might want to pick up a little bit of white here and there 
and you can turn your little canvas a different direction if you want. Okay, and mine is starting to look very, very green, so I'm going to come in with just a bunch of blue. right now. I'm just looking to sort of get all the main areas have at least a little bit of paint in it. So let me come up close and show you. Okay, when I was talking just a minute ago about don't worry about the blobs, I meant like these things right here. Because now we're just going to come back with our same brush, dip it in some white, pounce that off, and we can come back and tone those, those big blobs down just with a little streak of white paint over the top. Or maybe you like them. So that is basically how you create your canvas, okay? And I just, I'm simple around here at DIY Dreaming. I like to just paint off of a paper plate. A lot of people like to paint off of a glass paint, or maybe you have one of those fancy dancy artist palette things. Uh, but I say keep it simple. And paper plates are just great in that way. Okay, and then in between times that I'm working, I just throw my little brush in a Ziploc bag and roll it up, and then I don't have to wash it every single time. But I will have a glass of water a mason jar of water on hand just in case I need it for some reason. So let me put my paint over here and we'll move on to the next step, the fun step. Okay, and I need my hot glue gun for this one. And also I need to, where is, yes, I am using um, my Sure Bonder low temperature hot glue gun and the low temperature hot glue sticks that go with it. Uh, these are, I feel like they are even a little bit more uh, low temperature than a regular low temperature gun. And I just, I was just remembered I was using this yesterday working on a project that I'll show you later in the week with some of the fabric glue that I don't want to use for this project. So I'm just going to push it through and when it comes out clear, I'll know that I'm okay, that I'm done with the fabric glue. Okay. All right, so before I came live, I created this one because I would let the one that you just painted dry for at least 30 minutes until it's just completely thoroughly dry. All right, and then what we're gonna do basically is we're gonna decide what we want to create. Do you wanna make a cross? Do you wanna make um, a church? Do you wanna make a heart? Do you wanna do an angel? I mean, it can be absolutely whatever you want. This is an example of a cross, a bumpy cross, a rugged cross, and here's an example of a church. Okay, and this is how my church started, just to put you at ease, that I am not an artist. I decided that I wanted mine to be off-center, just a smidge, and that this was the basic shape that I wanted. So I just had this sitting next to me while I was applying my glue. Um, but I already have two of these churches, so I'm going to just show you, for time's sake, another cross, okay? Um, Alrighty, so what you're gonna do is you do want, if you're thinking of your canvas, your painted canvas in thirds, you want the bar that goes across the top of it to be up towards the top one third. And the reason why is um, 
because it, it will be more obvious that it's a cross if it's that way. If you put it right in the center, it may look like a package, okay? Um, oh, wow. Thank you to my Facebook friends for all this, the stars. That is so kind of you. Hello, everyone. I hope you're excited about this. I think that at the end, you're going to say, oh, my goodness, I had no idea. And you're going to absolutely want to go crazy with your hot glue gun. Okay. So I'm gonna start doing my, um, for my cross, the straight down thing. And I'm doing the, I am making this centered. And I'll hold it up in just a minute to show you. It can be as rugged and bumpy as you like, or it could be smoother. And I'm going to show you how to come back and make it bumpy. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Can you see that? I'm just putting my glue on really thick. And you're going to have glue strings everywhere, so don't worry about that. Can you guys see that? Okay. And you're going to have to pause every so often to let the glue in your glue gun heat back up again. So this is a very glue intensive project, but you know, I've seen these at various um, gift shops and they're like 40 or $45. And I know that the people who probably made those or produced them used some sort of special, I don't know, uh, special substance of some sort to create the, the, the dimension on theirs. And um, maybe it's like a spackle or a, some type of a compound, uh, but why? spend that much money and have to get a whole new thing when I already have a glue gun and you probably do too and I can create the exact same look just using hot glue okay so I've got my thing going up and down I'm coming back because I want it to be um, fat or wide and I'm just looking for the places where it's kind of narrow and I want to show you on the other one on this one a tip okay when you get to the bottom if you're doing one of these stretch canvases that can sit on its own because it's wide then don't continue your cross down here or it won't be able to stand you got to stop your cross before you get to the very bottom, or else it'll, it won't be stable. And I learned that the hard way. With this one, which I made 100 years ago, it feels like, this is just a burlap canvas, hot glue, and gold leaf. Can you believe it? This is one of my favorite things. You, If you've been watching DIY Dreaming for very long, you probably have seen it sitting right there because that is where it has been for, gosh, a long, long time. Okay, once your glue starts to dry, we're going to keep filling in the areas where it's maybe not as thick as you want it. And if you want it to be really bumpy, then what you're gonna do so it looks like a rugged cross and not a smoother cross. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna kinda do this with your glue gun on the top. And that's going to create some of those bumps and lumps. It's 
just going to create some of these lumps and bumps like you can see on this one. Do you see that? And you can keep going back over it as much as you want. But let's move on and do the next way because I want to show you also how to gild it. And I hope that you're, this is going to put you at ease that you do not have to be um, an expert crafter or an artist to do these. And they make such great gifts. Two years ago, before COVID, at Christmas time, I made some of these canvases just like this. I'll show you the one I kept for myself. And I have other stuff to show you here in just a few minutes too. And it looked like I made a bunch of these for all the leaders on my um, community Bible study that I was involved with. And they only cost a few dollars, but everybody loved them. So we'll come back to that while our, uh, while our special glue for the metallic leaf is drying or coming to tack. Okay, now I'm gonna start the things across. And I'm not gonna go all the way out to the edge because I don't think that it will look like a cross if I do. Glue strings. When you're done with this project, you are gonna have little flecks of silver and gold everywhere and then glue strings everywhere too. Okay. arm over here got a little bit wide. I'm going to wait for it to dry a little bit and then I'm going to probably cut that big lump off. just a little bit longer and you can just keep adding it and adding and adding to it can you see oh my word what I notice here are the glue strings you definitely are going to want to protect whatever surface that you're working on when we get to the next step because you don't want to have flecks of gold leaf on your surface forever. And my kitchen table is where I used to do gold leafing. And there's some pieces of gold leaf on there that I will never be able to get up. I'm just looking at the comments here on Facebook. You guys are so nice to me. Let's let that dry just a little bit and then we'll come back and do the squiggly digglies. But you can see, can you see the bumpy on this part of the cross? I did that just by wiggling my glue gun back and forth. And I do see an area where it's not really th thick enough. Looks funny. Now we're just gonna do some squiggles across this part of the cross. And then we're going to move on and I'm going to apply this special glue for metallic leaf. And then it'll have to come to tack. So I'll either get my, I'll just probably fan it a little bit, but while it's coming to tack, I'm gonna show you some other projects that I've done with gold leaf. Um, and the gold leaf and silver leaf that we're doing, that we're using today, 
they are not uh, real. <laughs> so it's not valuable and it's not expensive at all. I suppose you could do this project with, uh, you know, genuine gold leaf if you wanted. But if you're gonna do that, then buy a nicer quality canvas for sure. say good enough and I do want to get some of the strings off of it and off of me <laughs> okay let's see So what kind of crafts has everybody been doing lately? I've been busy here at DIY Dreaming. I have about 10 projects. I'm so sorry I forgot to put on the do not disturb on my phone. And of course, I got a phone call. Okay, so let's just bend this a little bit to cool this glue down. Okay, normally I would probably wait at least 10 minutes, but you don't want to sit here for 10 minutes while we count, and it's pretty solid. Okay, what we're going to be using, and I forgot to get links, but I'll put them in the comments here on Facebook and also over at YouTube, and I'll put them in the description of the video at both places as well. Okay, so we're going to be using this special glue from Maker Studio that is called Size, Gilding Size. You have to use size. You cannot use any other kind of glue when you are applying gold leaf. Now maybe you can use a different brand of size uh, and a different brand of leaf if you want, but it definitely needs to be gilding size. And um, and you're gonna want to, after you apply it, let it come to tack, which means just become the right stickiness. Okay, I'm just using a Credi Artist brush. Boy, I don't have a lot of <laughs> size in my container. I do have another thing of it. And I'm gonna just start painting it on my hot glue. So I want to get all the top parts. and off to the side and ends of it. And then I'm gonna come back and pick up the big puddles that kind of form in the holes. Cause those will take forever to dry, to come to tack and we just don't have forever <sighs> to do this project here on this video. I'm gonna hold it up in two seconds and show you what it looks like where I have started. It's gonna look, when you apply it, sort of milky. I put, started putting it up here. And then as it starts to come to tack, it will become more clear, and it will also start to look almost a little, like it has a shimmer and opalescence to it. I'm going to cover the whole thing and then I'm going to also come back one more time and make sure that I have it on the sides. Let's see a string. I thought I did. You don't want to get big globs of it on the sides or it will look kind of like this. I was not super careful right there. Can you see on both sides? 
which is not terrible, but I think it's better to mostly have your metallic leaf be on um, the raised part of whatever it is that you're making for your canvas. And if you do this bumpy, lumpy, rugged cross, you're gonna have to kind of pounce your glue into the into the recesses and holes and okay let's do this part So if you're just joining me, we are making some masterpieces that would make great gifts that you can do in seasonal colors or to go with your decor that cost just pennies. We're making them using hot glue and a little bit of gold leaf and a little bit of acrylic paint and it's gonna be really awesome. Okay, I have most of it covered and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe off my brush and my water and dry it off. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to pull up as best I can um, the areas where I have ponds. And I can see that because they're super milky in those areas. If you're doing this at home and you're not in a hurry, uh, there's really no need for you to do that. I'm also gonna show you this fleck kind of thing that I like to do. So these areas where it's on super thick, those will take forever to come to tack. And if your size is not, string there, is not to tack when you apply your metallic leaf, it won't stick right and it doesn't look good. Usually it takes uh, a little bit shorter on a surface that is porous like paper or wood because some of the this glue will sink into that but with this project it's not porous glue is not and it can take a little bit longer usually they say between 15 minutes and an hour is your open time and that's just fancy artist words Open time means your time that it will stick on there. Okay. All right. I think that is sufficient for right now for that. Now I want to show you this flick technique because I really like to have a few little spatters. Can you see them? On my canvas you can also do the corners if you want and you don't have to do the whole entire metallic leaf process all at the same time you can do it bit by bit but I'm going to show you this so I'm just going to dip a brush into my size and it does really splatter so make sure your surface is covered and I'm going to just flick it Also, I'm going to put just a teeny bit of it kind of on the edges in some places. Okay, so you can't really see the spatters on that, but you can see it on my cardboard. 
All right, let's set this guy right here for a few minutes. And you do want to get your hands clean before you go on to the next step because if you're working with the leaf and you have size on your hands, it's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be wanting to gild you to apply metallic leaf on you and not on your project because it's going to be sticking to your fingers. Just make sure that I get every single little bit of it off my hands. Let's turn this over and we'll work on the other side. This is a cake board, if you're wondering, um, from Walmart. And I like to work on these because once they get good and yucky, I can just recycle it. They're in the recycle bin. Okay, I think my fingers are free of size for the most part. Okay, so while we're waiting for our size to come to tack, let me just show you a few of the other projects that I've done in the past. I'm gonna show you some that are this style, and I'm gonna show you some that are a different kind of project, but they're all, I used gold leaf on all of them. This is a bumpy cross, and this was one of the first ones that I made, and so I wasn't, you know, you learn as you're going along, and I think what you learn not to do is, is, is as important as what you learn not to do. Coming back to this, if, it, if I was do, redoing this exact project again, I would not have the ends of my cross go all the way out to the edge on the sides. And I probably wouldn't do my leaf quite as thick, but it is still pretty, and this is setting in my family room just on the built-in bookshelves. It's been there for, it's probably really dusty because it's been there forever. And um, this is just an ivory color paint that I painted this canvas. You can use any kind of paint. It could be acrylic paint, it could be craft paint, it can be chalk paint, uh, whatever you have on hand in whatever color you want. Okay, here's another one. And this one I also made a few years ago. The underneath of this is this dusty blue colored paint. And on this one also, I did go, I cannot never figure out where I am. I would not go all the way out to the edges again, but you can see how bumpy that is. And I probably would not put my leaf on quite as thick. But this is a pretty project too. What do you guys think? I'm just looking at the comments here on Facebook. Okay, Debbie says that it still looks good. Thank you, Debbie. I mean, honestly, it, especially if you can find these canvases that are th have a thick profile, if you can find them on sale, these are great. They are the best, I think. Okay, other product, projects that I've done with the leaf include this. This was one of those little wooden, chunky, pieces that you can get at Dollar Tree. And I was working on Christmas ornaments, but then I discovered just how nice those are because they'll just stand right up. And so this is this citron or, it's this funky green that I love so much. With silver leaf, same process exactly. And then this is that dusty blue. And this has been sitting up here. You, if, I don't know if you've noticed it, but that's where that one lives. And this one, this one lives over on my cabinets over here. But um, yeah, that just shows that you can do a lot of different things. I do like how chunky these are because they will stand up on their own. Okay, also over here, I have an example of how you can use gold leaf on ceramics. This is just a funny little ring dish, a mermaid tail, that I picked up from Dollar Tree last year, or maybe it was the year before, I don't remember for sure. And I just did a little coat of this silver leaf around the edge, and then I gilded it. 
just to see how it would work and it works great. These are the same uh, products that I used on this as what we'll be using for our canvases today. All right, and then also over here are just three examples of a project that we did last week that you guys seem to have loved. We decoupaged king clam shells and oyster shells with these pretty blue and white napkins that had birds on them and then we gilded the edges and this is just a small clam shell or scallop shell or whatever that is this is one of those uh, baking scallop shells that you can get at restaurant supply or kitchen supply stores and it makes a great just a great little um, place to throw like your keys or whatever little things that you would have change or your jewelry, your watch, whatever. So that was gold leaf for these as well. And those were super fun. If you didn't get to see that video, it is here in my videos and you can watch it anytime that you would like. So let's come back to this guy and let's work on the one that I have applied the hot glue and the gilding size, which is the special glue that you need. It looks like this, if you're gonna get it from Maker Studio. And I'll get some links in the comments here on Facebook and also at YouTube. So this is gilding size. It's around $9 and it lasts forever. I mean, I've had, probably had that bottle for two, over two years. And then we're gonna be using, today, we're gonna to be using silver leaf because I'm 100% out of gold leaf. So use what you have whenever possible. And these little guys come with these books that have 25 sheets of leaf. There's also a copper color that's really nice too. And um, that are separated by this little orange tissue paper. And I'm gonna show you in just a minute how to handle it and how to apply it. But let's take a second here to just fan this just for a second. And it is looking clear for the most part. I don't see any big milky puddles. Okay, let's go for it. So like I said, we're gonna be using the silver leaf and it's gonna come in a booklet that's a little bit bigger than this, but I've cut mine. So I think the other piece of it is in here in the bottom. Because sometimes it's easier to work on something when you have a smaller piece of leaf. All right, I'm just gonna put this back in here because we're gonna use the bigger pieces today. All right, you're going to lift up the little orange pieces of paper that come in between each layer. This piece of leaf has been torn slightly, but I'll show you with the next one. Okay, and fold the orange paper over, not, not exactly all the way to the top. And I'm just going to lay it down and pull this sheet up. And then I'm going to burnish it. Right, and I have another, another piece right here, partial piece. Well, let's just do a whole one because I don't know that I can get that apart here. Okay, so you're gonna fold your, your book up and grab a hold of it using the tissue like this. And I would imagine that that's how you're gonna do it no matter what brand of metallic leaf you're working with. This brand here is from Maker Studio, and I will put links for that in the comments. Okay. 
Okay, let's pick up some of these big, big sheets and see if we can just kind of lay them on. I know I have flecks all over the place. Let's go back to this one right here. My tissue is, probably I had some glue on my fingers when I was working with this piece. Oh, rats. Let's just go to another one. These books last forever, and like I said, they're not expensive, they're not valuable. So I'm just gonna grab another little piece and put it right here and press it down. All right, so then I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna pull up one or two pieces of this orange tissue paper. I guess I'm just gonna pull up one. And I'm gonna wad it up and I'm going to start in a circular motion, pressing my leaf into the cross. And if I can see places where it's not fully in there, I can pick up little pieces of leaf and stick it back on there. This is called burnishing. for the places where my leaf didn't quite get pushed into the lumpy bumpy cross. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to remove, you know, some of it, the real wispy stuff, the bigger pieces. Okay, now if you are a little bit like me, and you are frugal and you want to save things, you can take these pieces of leaf and put them on your table. And I have this little dish right here where I keep all the bits and pieces over the last couple of years of different things in here. So I'm just going to brush this off my desk into my little dish. And we'll see how much comes up now. I might do it again. Okay, for this next step, you are going to just find kind of a stiff, cruddy brush, nothing fancy. And I'm gonna kind of pounce on my cross to make sure that I've gotten my leaf into the crevices. And then we're gonna just start brushing you'll see, it will start to remove the big pieces. And here you can see the beginning of the flex from when I flicked my artist brush. And you can also see how it's sticking just a little bit to the edges. This um, canvas that I'm working on here was part of a two pack from Dollar Tree. So, I mean, I have 50 cents into this. And maybe a dollar, I don't know, a dollar worth of leaf and nothing in the paint. I mean, maybe 10 cents worth. And, you know, it's just, I don't know how much the hot glue would be, but it's, this is such a super affordable project and you get such a great result. Okay, now sometimes you're gonna have these areas where it's wanting to stick to everything. And you're just gonna have to keep working on it. As you do that, the pieces that are not stuck into size will eventually come off.
and I think it turned out beautiful. There's a few areas where I must have gotten some size on my canvas right there, and also a bigger piece right here. But for the most part, I think, you know, having those little imperfections is what makes it special, what makes it homemade, hand done. Um, and you can see that it, you could just crank these out, go to Dollar Tree and buy, you know, four or five packs of these and get, you know, lots of glue and do the quick painting technique and then put your hot glue on and you could make some great presents for, I mean, any holiday. And they don't have to be a cross or a church. It could be a heart. It could be whatever symbol might be significant for you. For me, I have been seeing these, this style of church everywhere. Every time I go to Pinterest at three in the morning because I can't sleep, it seems like these pop up in my feed, this style of church. So I just decided to try it myself. And what I want to show you is what I did after the gilding. Okay, after I was done gilding, then, no, actually before I gilded, but after the glue was on, I came back and I painted my church, just more a darker color of this Lagoon Waverly paint. And I used some white mixed with a little bit of blue to do the door and this window. And then I gilded it after that was dry so that it would stick out more as a church. On this one, I did the same thing. I came back and painted my church this blue. This one was watered down. The blue was watered down with white paint a lot more. And also I put a lump here in the middle to give the give the resemblance that those are two big tall doors at the front of the church. I don't know. I think they're both nice. What do you guys think? So then after my paint was dry, then I came back and I gilded. Obviously, if you're doing a cross, you don't need to, after your hot glue is dry, you don't need to come back and paint anything. But, I mean, I just think it's lovely. I love how they turned out. Um, I want to push these off my desk just a little bit so that I can set this here in case you want to do a screenshot or look at these again. And this was the inspiration for my churches which I just drew with a pencil on a little piece of computer paper, not fancy. There are the two churches. Here's the canvas that we just did. Here's some gilding size and the leafing. it uh, start to finish. If you want, you could come back with a coat of clear matte sealer spray and go over the whole thing, but honestly, I don't think you need to. The paint is there. It's dry. It's stable. The glue is there. It's dry. It's stable. And the gilding, the metallic leaf is there and stable. All right. If you were giving these to friends, I would suggest that you write the year and just a short message on it for your friend or family member. So what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments if you like this project, if you're watching this on Facebook and I see a lot of you guys are on, and thank you so much for the stars, that, that means so much to me. Uh, if you want to see the stuff I have coming up and I have a lot, well I have projects I'm working on right now, uh, then do a this, or a this, it's a heart, 
or say something in the comments here on Facebook. Um, and make sure you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, take two seconds to make sure that you have subscribed to my YouTube channel. And then take a few minutes to look through the different playlists that I have. I have a whole playlist of Christ and Crafting. I have a whole playlist of DIY flowers. I have a playlist of vintage buttons. I have a playlist of things that I've made with painter's drop cloth. Uh, so you can, you can search on YouTube to find whatever topic you might want to watch. Okie dokie. I can't wait to sit down now and read the comments on Facebook. And then if you're making comments on YouTube, as those come in, I will read your comments there too. Thanks for watching. I would love to see what you do with this idea, especially if you use some different colors. And I'm going to put a link in a few places to these supplies that we used in case you want to just grab some of this. It's inexpensive and it works great. Alrighty, have a blessed rest of your day. If you caught me in the middle of this video, it will be available just in a few minutes for you to watch on replay. If you wanna go back to the start and see all the steps all the way through. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys later.